Hello. Hello, Sam Smith. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, awesome, it's always. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. Can we get some brown rice to start with? Can I get pumpkin, broccoli, potato as well, please? And two spring rolls as well. <laughs> yeah, I had this last night. It's really good. Not so sweet. Yeah, it's fine. It's lovely. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thailand spending a bit of time away from from portrait work and it's that I want to be doing work which really dives deep into me delves deep into me not dives and things that I feel and I have a real passion for and these are all bullshit words they get overused they mean nothing so I'll, I'll tell you a quick story to describe what I mean after I came out of school I I was lucky enough to have a little bit of time and I actually didn't use that time well because I didn't know what was going on. I was, I was in a funny place. My brother had just been ill. I didn't know. I, I wasn't right in the head. But what I would do, I would have a lot of time and I would try and think about what I wanted from life. And the epiphany I came to was that it came down to one question. If you were immortal and money was an issue, was not an issue, what would you do? And I thought about this question for ages. And I came up with two options. One of them was cycle around the world forever, <laughs> or cycle, so become a professional cyclist. That was actually, that came to me in a dream, which was really strange. I, w I woke up crying because I saw um, me and my friends cycling along at dusk in France, along this field with uh, sunflowers, and it was really beautiful. And we were these kind of silhouettes cycling along. And I woke up uh, in tears because it made me so happy. And uh, so I felt like that was a real kind of calling in a way. And secondly, it was to use my imagination and create things. This is this gets a bit waffly because I don't know. It's not a very concrete goal. So either cycle or be an artist, let's say. And so in general, I found myself exploring. That's the artist thing. And there were two moments that stuck out. One was when I cut out a collage of this character who was kind of a version of me when I was in France, in Paris in 2005. I was very kind of lonely and a bit confused about everything and I cut out this guy and I was so engaged with what I was doing it was a very standout moment it was like it, it shone it was a shining moment in my life and it stuck with me and that character turned into onion eventually and I felt really close to the ideas that came out when I was working with onion as if he's a real thing which I suppose he is there was that but the, the one I wanted to tell you about was when I had this idea out of nowhere. I don't know where, what it was for or how I justified it. And it was to make a, a giant papier-mâché pirate's head which you could wear and a set of arms which you could also wear. So you pop your hands in the, the arms and you turn into these giant hands and you have a pirate's head on your head. <laughs> it's complete nuts. Um, and I spent about a week doing this and I didn't really know how to work well. So it took quite a long time, but I remember sitting down in my room and it felt like such a pointless thing to do, yet at the same time I was so invigorated by it. The idea really got my brain going, it got my heart going, and it, everything kind of fired. I'm sure everyone knows what it feels like when you get an idea and it's kind of like there's like fireworks in your head almost. And you just, everything connects and everything makes sense to you and like oh, blah, blah, blah. everything else that's crap just disappears and you just sort of start flying in your head. And making this pirate did that and I, I spent loads of time doing the papier mache and tearing it up and then gluing it to the face. I used a tennis ball for his eye 
which I papier mache round. I remember carving all the bits, like I got this mesh of wire mesh, which I shaped for his nose, this big thing. And it really engrossed me. And maybe it was a combination that it was silly and that it was a funny way to spend time, but it really gripped me. And it was another shining moment where I really felt in touch with my creativity, my imagination. It was almost like my imagination was operating me. It wasn't a kind of a back room in my mind, which I could sometimes refer to when I wasn't doing real world things. It was everything. And I actually feel like when I'm doing the right thing, this feeling comes to me. When I'm using my imagination, it all makes sense and everything just flies. Ping, 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 ping. It's just, it all works. And it means other areas of my life I can work on better and I can function better with, which is a great thing. So I, as the more I focused on my creativity, the better my life has become, the happier I've become, and the more fulfilled I am. This comes to the goal. So my goal, as of this epiphany, is to make works of art which are, emanate from that same place, that place of feeling and excitement and joy, imagination, all these buzzwords which probably mean nothing. But what I was just describing, works that really speak to me. That is my, my current goal. I've got an audience, people who like my work, and now I really want to kind of push their attention and siphon off the ones who don't care and really hone in on the ones who do care. And I'm doing that by creating meaningful, difficult pieces of work to create and going with it. And I say difficult because sometimes when you have something inside of you, if you don't, comp it's, it's like a really strong feeling. You can't compromise on it because it won't, it won't do what you want it to do. It won't come from the same place. It'll be a dumbed down, narrowed vision of what you wanted. And that's why I slightly accidentally called them difficult. So at the moment, the work I'm doing, what I'm working on is a book called Spitfire. It is a book about two cyclists who are friends and they end up both trying to win the Tour de France. This book has been on my plate for the last three months, I'd say. So I've saved up all the money I could to come to Thailand, which is where I am now. And I'm working every day on this. I've written the story, I put it into panels, which is what these are. And now I'm translating the panels, which is a 40 page story, into storyboards, the first draft. This is what I'm going through now, and every day I try and do five to ten pages. That's what I'm working on in the library, where you just saw me walk to, sorry, cycle to, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm just keeping you informed with the projects, why I'm doing it, and I really hope that this is something that engages you and it excites you. It's probably going to be the people who already know me and who have faith in my imagination and my ability to create um, meaningful and unique works of art. I think. That's what I'm going to add. That's where I'm going to add the most value to people's lives. That's where I'm going to do my best work is when it means something, it comes from my heart and it makes me excited. That's where you're going to get the most out of it. I'm adding value.
I have finished.